much for the privilege of being with all of you here today in this wonderful organization, Eagle Forum. We wouldn't be here without Phyllis Schlafly, the woman who started this organization. She truly is a giant. If you think back to her life, to her career, she was a giant in so many ways, in so many of our lives. I got to know who she was as a young woman when I was in Congress. I remember being lobbied by one of my political science professors who was chiding the women in my political science class in the 1970s, why didn't we do, go out and do more to try to pass the ERA? And so he was there lobbying all of us, and I was at a state university. It's all I could afford at the time. And I, I didn't know what it was. I didn't understand it. Honestly, I wasn't political. I could care less about politics when I was in college. But he was lobbying us and telling why this was so important. As time went on, I started to read more. And my mother-in-law introduced me, or my future mother-in-law introduced me to the Phyllis Schlafly Report. I got one, and I started reading it, and I had been reading college textbooks, other books. I never read a more concentrated, fact-filled document in my life that you could take to the bank where absolutely everything in it was red hot. You could use it for absolutely anything. And so I couldn't wait until the Phyllis Schlafly report would come in my mailbox. I'd open it up. I'd consume everything. I'd underline it. I'd highlight it. I'd write in the margins until I knew it, until it was in my brain. Just like when Rush Limbaugh came along, it was like three hours of a university education every day, another giant. But you look at a Phyllis Schlafly, and I loved what David Barton said today when he said that she, what she gave us was, was uh, into the future that what she did those years ago in the 1970s by stopping ERA is only now beginning to bear its fruit. I absolutely believe that because Phyllis Schlafly was a giant. She was also a prophet. She was a prophet. People in her time, in her day, looked at her with derision. They were snotty. They were arrogant. They looked down her, their nose at her. She was so backward. She was a 1950s housewife pining away for 1950s values. Let me tell you, who's laughing now? Here's Phyllis Schlafly, who was a prophet, who was a seer, who could see into the future what the ERA would yield, what the fruit would be, what society would bring. I had looked up on YouTube some interesting things about Phyllis, because she was my mentor. Phyllis was my heroine. Throughout my entire life, if you ask me who my heroine was, that's, I'm not saying it just because I'm here at your 50th anniversary, she was my heroine. And she began, in co when, I, when I was at college age, she was my hero that I could look to. This woman who was so accomplished, who was married, I'm now married 44 years, the same amount of years she was married to her husband. She had six children. I didn't quite meet that. I had five, but I did have 23 foster children, so maybe Phyllis, I beat you on that. But she... She did everything well. She raised the bar on everything she did. Being a homemaker, being a wife, she raised the bar on being a mother. She taught her children to read. I read in one Phyllis Schlafly report that she had read, taught all of her children to read before they went to school. And so I decided that's what I'm going to do too. I'm going to teach my children to read. And we did. We bought Sing, Spell, Read, and Write from the 700 Club from Pat Robertson. We used that. My girlfriend sent me a book called Teach Your Child to Read in 20 Minutes a Day. I'm using the same book now with our six-year-old grandson. This, If you want to save America, you teach your child to read. It begins right there. She influenced my life in so many ways, but she was a giant because she could see what was true, what was right, what was good. What Phyllis did more than anything by being a giant, she raised the bar and she set the standard. 
She set the standard, and I say this in particular to all of the young people who are here tonight. What she did is raise the bar to a level, a standard that was so high that we still today are trying to emulate what it is that she did in her personal life, in her professional life, in her political life, the way that she conducted her life, the way that she lived. She was a giant because she set the standard. Phyllis passed away six years ago. I was privileged to be at her funeral. We just saw another funeral this week of a consequential woman, the Queen of England, Elizabeth II. We, many of you, especially young people, you watch this. It's something that you'll never see again in your lifetime. A funeral of that magnitude, of a woman that consequential. Probably one of the most poignant moments of that funeral was when the funeral was in, when, when the coffin was in the, the church, everything was very simple. Every scripture went straight to the Lord. There was no conversation about what the queen had done. There wasn't anything about her great accomplishments. It was what Jesus Christ had done for her and her relationship with him. It was all a set service, but the most poignant moment was when you saw her casket draped in the flag and sitting on top were three pillows. One was the scepter that meant her rule, that she was given a rule. The other was the crown, that she was the one who would bear it, who would lead. The other one was the orb, because part of her title was to be defender of the faith. And you saw the master of the Windsor Castle Chapel who removed each of these items. And as you saw it, it was the greatest lesson in government that the world could get. What that showed is that was temporary. It was a temporary regency that she held as queen. She was to be responsible to hold the standard high in her rule, of England and the Commonwealth, she led and her power was given back. It was put on the altar. It was returned to God. The power that she had was given to her by God. She wielded it well for that period of time that she had it. And then it was given back on the altar to then be given to the next monarch in line, King Charles III. She was the defender of the faith that was given back. And then it had to be handed to the next one and the crown that sat upon her head, that she was so faithful, was put back, and then it will be put on King Charles' head. You see, she was a giant. She was faithful. For the 70 years that she had that position, she was faithful. We look at Phyllis. Her entire life, Anne said she would be 98 years old today, which meant she was 92 when she passed away, that good long life. When you think of the queen and when you think of how she preserved and held the standard for the world, you only see it clearly in retrospect after they're gone. When a giant is taken from this earth, then you see what we've lost. That's how I felt about Phyllis, this giant who was so faithful on a personal level so faithful with her children, so faithful with her grandchildren, so faithful with her nation, so faithful with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, so faithful with politics. She wouldn't let one rascal get by, not one lousy congressman or one lousy senator. She wouldn't let him get past her because she lifted the bar. She set the standard. And what is that standard? That standard is none other than Jesus Christ. It is the Bible. The queen understood that. If you saw that mini-series, The Crown, you saw that she invited Billy Graham into the castle. If you saw Franklin Graham, who's put out a half-hour video that you must watch, it's very clear she'd heard about the gospel that was being preached by Billy Graham, and she wanted him in the castle. And so for year after year after year, she testified to her faith in Jesus Christ. With Phyllis Schlafly, you couldn't not be in her presence 
and not hear her also lift the standard of Jesus Christ. That's what she did. She was a giant. The queen was a giant. We have other giants in our midst. We just lost Ken Starr, who was another giant, a legal giant. He also raised the bar. He taught at Regent University, and he forever lifted the standard of Jesus Christ. For each one of us in this room, it doesn't end there. Phyllis was an ordinary woman, but she gave her life to the Lord. And for her whole life, she was the Lord's. You see, we have that same opportunity. We too can take our life and yield it and surrender it in the day, way that Phyllis did. Every night she knelt by her bed. Every night she gave her day and her life and her family and everything that she did, eagle form, to the Lord. This is everything because it's the main thing. And Phyllis lifted the bar, and it's why she was a giant, because she served the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That's the giant. And so whatever it is that the Lord has called you to in your life, especially young people, what he has called you to, when I was in college, I was a nothing. I didn't know what I wanted. I came from a very poor, impoverished background. No idea where I was headed. But it was her example, Phyllis's example, of a life poured out, a life surrendered, a life that lifted itself up and raised the bar. Watching her life gave me hope, gave me inspiration, gave me courage. I could have a marriage. I could have children. I could homeschool them. I could teach them to read. I could be in politics. I could become a lawyer, a tax lawyer. I could run for Congress. I could be in higher academia. I could do what the Lord called me to do. Because there's people like Phyllis who said yes, who said they would do what the Lord called them to do. Join me in prayer. Father, I pray now and thank you for that memory of Phyllis Schlafly, a giant who, as David Barton reminded us, is only now beginning to have the impact of the prophet that she was for years, speaking into our culture. She was pelted with everything, derided in every possible way, scorned in every possible way. She probably had the smallest bank account next to any one of the people that she debated. And yet, ultimately, she prevailed. Why? Because she raised your word. She raised your stature. And that's ultimately what is true, what is worthwhile, what is valuable, what is eternal. Phyllis knew in the final analysis what would last. And that's why her soul for eternity will last. And it's available to each one of us. We too can yield our lives to Jesus Christ and our souls will live in eternity with Jesus Christ. And we too can be consequential as she was probably the most consequential political figure in the last 50 years. So too, we can be consequential in this world in the way that you would lead us to be. Thank you for her inspiration and her well-lived life. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm.